Panic attacks. Many people have them and don't even realize it. It's something our chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, struggled with for years, and he's only going public about it now in his new book, No Time to Panic. We sat down with him for an intimate conversation about his struggles and what he ultimately decided to do to move forward. I can't think of a better title than No Time to Panic. So here you are, this courageous, fearless world traveler. Still very much a, a chaotic scene here. Reporting on some of the, the biggest events of, of our lifetime. Are you prepared for confrontation if it has to happen? And you're suffering with, with panic attacks and, and anxiety. When was the first moment that you felt that and you were able to identify it as such? Two different things, right? The first time I experienced panic, that full-on underwear wedding, I'm molting into a werewolf experience was in college defending my thesis. And I got up to the podium and it felt like the floor had fallen out. I was gripping the podium with this night white knuckled grip and I couldn't see, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't do anything. Um, but it took 15 years for me to actually recognize that that suite of symptoms that I had experienced was actually a panic attack. Partly because I just chalked it up as nerves and I went through it in radio and then in television. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's just nerves. But it would leave me just completely racked and wrecked afterwards. And so when did you realize, oh, that's what this is? I mean, it was probably in 2013. It's actually when Dan Harris told me about his book. Mm. I sat down in Dan Harris's office and he started describing this book and what it's about. And I said, that's a panic attack? That, that's me. I get that almost every time I go on air. And then what did you do? I kept it secret. I couldn't tell anyone. I mean, having panic when you're live on television as a broadcast reporter is like a free solo climber being afraid of heights. It is a major professional liability. So I... I kept it secret. I didn't tell anybody. My wife knew, um, my shrink knew, although we didn't really tackle it head on. Um, and at that point, I just tried to subdue it with everything that I could. I mean, I had magical underwear in the rotation. I had, uh, I smoked cigarettes before live shots sometimes. I would do stretching. I would just arrive really, really late so there wouldn't be any pressure. Um, anything to try to like change up the rhythm of that intense pressure that I felt. And so you go to therapy, you try even hallucinogens, you go to retreats in, in Peru. Did any of the, these methods work? I, I wouldn't just like, there's one thing that's sort of interesting, right? People ask, well, Matt, you, you're like by definition a courageous person, right? We've seen you, you go to war zones, you love it. And I feel more calm when everything is chaos around me than I am when it's this pristine live shot and nothing is happening and I'm expected to be flawless. It's that fear of the expectation of perfection that makes me crumble. Mm. And so it all came tumbling down for me when I had to go report on the Kobe Bryant helicopter crash. January 26, 2020, I made a catastrophic mistake during a panic attack on air. And for years I'd been telling my wife that I was unhappy um, and she had supported me in thinking about maybe doing something else. Because so, your job requires you to be cool and calm, not panic. Right, and so I never had a problem, right? I had never made a mistake, but my fear was that I would lose control and make a mistake, and then it happened. And that was shattering for me. And so I was suspended for a month, and during that suspension, I started doing different things because suspension has a way of opening up your schedule. So I did something called holotropic breath work, and it takes you to an altered state, basically. And I started crying. And it opened me up in a way that I hadn't expected. I talked to you when you first uh, talked about uh, the book coming out on, on social media and, and, and gave you this admission because it, it felt good to know. Like, I knew about Dan Harris. I had had conversations with him. And then I, I was like, oh my gosh, and Matt too? You know, I think that it, um, can uh, allow us all to feel safe, right? When you know that you're not the only one. But it's not something that I, I talk about often. And I, I'm curious, what made you decide to, to be so vulnerable? It's one thing to talk behind closed doors in an office. It's another to say, I'm Matt Gutman and I suffer from panic attacks and, and here's my life story. 
I didn't really, first of all, I was so moved and grateful that you were willing to share with me your story. And I thought the same thing. I'm like, Lindsay? Come on, <laughs> Lindsay Davis? You have the most presence and centeredness of almost anybody in this business. But people are surprised that people like us experience panic. And that's one of the reasons I had to share it. Because so many people out there do. The science, the data from 2006 shows that 28% of Americans are likely to experience a panic attack in their lifetime. In 2006, I had already experienced panic for six years. I would never have known to answer the survey correctly because I didn't even know to diagnose myself. I didn't know that I had panic. So psychologists believe the real number is probably about 50% of Americans will experience a panic attack in their lifetime. And the symptoms so closely mimic a heart attack that it has a serious knock-on effect on our healthcare system. If there's one takeaway that you want people to, to have when, if they read or get the chance to, to take a look at No Time to Panic, what would it be? There are two, maybe three. Okay. One, panic is normal. Panic is pervasive. So many people have it. We are designed for it. And three, it's not a life sentence. There are ways around it and there are ways to live with it. And you detail that in No Time to Panic. Thank you, Matt. It's so refreshing for people to be able to have this, this honest conversation, because as you say, there are so many, me included, who feel like, oh, is it safe to talk about it? And, and so I thank you for pulling back the curtain. Thank you. I mean, and the other thing that I would say that is so important, and I think you just brought it up, is stripping away the shame. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.